Well, hi everyone and greetings from Northern Michigan. This is Bob the Science Guy and welcome back to our discussion of Sleeping Warrior and his assertion that gravity is nothing more than the force of density. Now, in our first episodes, we talked about force and weight. We touched on gravity, but today I wanna to talk about density specifically. So let's cue up the music and get started. So let's have another quick look at this opening statement in uh, Sleeping Warriors video. Now, it says here very clearly that density is a force, despite for years the rumpus telling us that weight is a force, density is not a force. So let's go see. Recall, force equals mass times acceleration. What is weight? Is mass times the acceleration of gravity. That's a force. What is density? Density equals mass divided by volume. Okay, we got the mass, right? Where's the acceleration? Sorry. Density is not a force by definition. So we won't, we won't discuss it any further uh, as a force because as you know, science has defined force and Density doesn't meet the definition even remotely. Well, let's go ahead and listen to this a little bit more. But not only is density a force, density is the force. Okay, now we've got another thing right here that's kind of interesting. It says density is the force you science deniers tell us is actually gravity. So according to what he's saying, based on what we've looked at, what's gravity? Well, funny you should ask. Gravity is a 9.81 meter per second square acceleration going straight towards the center mass of the Earth. And we can measure it right here on my desk. The white line on top demonstrates 1G of force. The green, the blue, and the red lines demonstrate X, Y, and Z axis forces due to gravity. Now, for an extra credit, why don't you sit down and tell me at what angle my iPad is sitting right now? Because you can easily tell that from those numbers. but So on force equals mass times acceleration. And when this acceleration is gravity, that's called weight. All right, so let's, let's see if Mr. Uh, Riley here explains this any further. You science deniers tell us is actually gravity. So wait, the rumpus has been telling everyone that density is not a force, but weight is a force? Yeah, that would sound pretty accurate. Weight does meet the definition of a force. Density does not. How do you do that, bruv? What a muppet. You know, I'm just an American and I'm not really up on English slang. Would you do me a favor and tell me, does a muppet just mean somebody who is correct in their interpretation of physics? Or does it mean somebody that's smarter than you in general? I was just curious rumpus is lying. Okay, so how is the rumpus lying? Now, is weight not a force? No, it is a force. It's mass times the acceleration of gravity. That's the definition of a force. Is density a force? Well, no. Density is mass divided by volume. There's no acceleration involved. So, you seem to be a little confused here. Let's go see if this professor-looking guy can help you out at all of your quantum mechanics, first in the behavior of light and then in the behavior of matter, and finally culminating in 19 equations, quantum mechanics. Oh, well that was easy. He's talking about quantum mechanics, which has to do with very tiny little particles like photons and wave theory of light, etc. Really doesn't have any bearing whatsoever on this discussion. Does that mean that Newton is specifically wrong? Is force not equal to mass times acceleration? Does that equation somehow not work to describe what we call and define as force? Well, that is force, and it works very nicely. Uh, we use this every day in engineering. It works perfectly. Now, one of the main reasons that people like Sleeping Warrior say that density is a force is that density can cause things to move. All right? Let me give you an example that he cited in another video recently. 
So let's go out and get a couple of bowling balls and throw them in a tank of water and see if they're going to float. Take the first one, you dump it in, and it doesn't float. And then there's another what looks to be identical bowling ball, and you dump it in the water, and it's just barely floating. Put the third bowling ball in there, and guess what? It floats even better than the second one. So now people want to know why. And you could go get to one of your physics professors and say, what makes things float? And the answer is density, density, density. And the answer is density. And you know, your physics professor will tell you it's the weight uh, compared to the volume. And then the question is, can you figure this out? Uh, can well, Mr. Riley seems to think that he has figured it out. It's density, density, density. However, he's missing some things. So, so far he has a narrative in that gravity does not exist. So he has to come up with some way of describing why things float, sink, fall. And he's hit upon this idea that it is relative density. But he doesn't seem to know anything about density. So let's look at this a little closer. We're going to skip through some of these silly memes uh, where it's density where it's not buoyancy. So apparently Mr. Riley knows what buoyancy is, but he refuses to use it for reasons that we'll see in a moment. Now let's do a little figure in here. A bowling ball is about eight and a half inches in diameter, right here. The formula to calculate the volume of a sphere is volume equals four thirds pi times the radius cubed. In this case, the radius will be 4.25 inches. Here's pi. Here's 4 thirds. So what we come up with is that the volume of a bowling ball is about 322 cubic inches. Okay, so let's have a look at this test again. Now this first bowling ball is heavy, more than 12 pounds, and you see how it sinks. The second bowling ball is neutrally buoyant and it just kind of bobs there. The third bowling ball clearly is floating. Now what we can tell from our calculation here is that the one bowling ball that sunk is greater than 12 pounds. That's the one on the left here. The one in the middle is neutrally buoyant and it's probably about a 12 pound bowling ball. Whereas the one on the right is obviously less than 12 pounds and it's floating. So once again, Sleeping Warrior does have a shred of truth here. This is related to the density of the bowling ball. However, because that was the part of his experiment that supported his narrative, he stopped there. He didn't go on to answer the second part of the question. And that is, why does density make objects sink or float? Okay, so here we have Mr. Riley insisting this is all density. And it's most definitely not buoyancy. But what's the difference between the two? Now let me introduce something called Archimedes' Principle. Archimedes' Principle is used to help determine the buoyant force of an object. And what Archimedes' Principle says that if you look at the, uh, the density of the fluid, and the amount of a fluid that is displaced times gravity. That will give you an idea of the amount of buoyant force an object that displaced that fluid has. Now let's go ahead and talk a little bit about the force of buoyancy, and it is a force, so that we know that it's going to end up in Newtons. Okay? Now, a force is a mass times an acceleration. What is the mass involved in buoyancy? The mass involved in buoyancy is the volume and mass of the fluid being displaced. So, if you want to rewrite this here a little more properly, it is the density of the fluid times the volume of the fluid times the acceleration, which is the force of gravity. Now let's go ahead and take a moment and apply that to our bowling ball. Now, in this case, the force of buoyancy equals 
the density of the water being displaced, which is 0 0.036 pounds per cubic inch, the volume of fluid that was displaced was 322 cubic inches. These two cancel and we have pounds. So our answer is going to be in pounds. Now when we did the calculation for that, we came up with 11.667 pounds. Okay, so let's go ahead and do this in real units. So 11.667 pounds is about 5.3 kilograms. So the force of buoyancy will be 5.3 kilograms times 9.8 meters per second squared, which is the acceleration of gravity. Here's our mass, there's our acceleration, there's our force. Our answer will be 51.97 newtons. That is our force of buoyancy from an object the size of a ball. Now let's have a brief look at what happened with the bowling balls, okay? Now, I'm assuming that the 12 pound bowling ball was the one in the middle and one was less and one was more. So I just arbitrarily used 16 and eight pound balls. Now here are the masses of those bowling balls in kilograms. And this 5.27 is the mass of the water that a bowling ball would displace. And then what I did was I took the difference and this gives me my net mass for the buoyancy equation. And you see that I've got a positive 1.38, a positive 1.8 or 0.18 and a negative 1.64. Now, because we have a positive force here, this bowling ball is going to sink towards the ground, displacing the water upward. We have a very slightly positive mass with a 12 pound ball, and it's probably going to just float in the middle of the water. And then we have a strongly negative mass with the eight pound ball or force with the eight pound ball. And that's going to drive it opposite the direction of the acceleration of gravity or upward. So this explains exactly how and why the bowling balls float. Now, simply having a difference in mass or a difference in density will not cause the bowling balls to float. There has got to be an acceleration acting on it. The acceleration is the force of gravity, and we are actually able to predict exactly how much. Now, if we actually put a scale on these bowling balls that read out in Newtons, it would probably come to something very similar to what you're seeing right here. So, in any event, We'll go over this a little bit more in future videos, but this is a good place. Well, everyone, thank you for stopping by. Now that's the actual science behind buoyancy and density. We're gonna go over it a little bit more in the next episode, but for now, that'll just give you something to kind of think about a little bit and see what the difference between strict density and actual buoyancy is and how that is used to make submarines raise and fall in the ocean or balloons go up and down depending on what they're filled with relative to the air around them. It also enables us to predict exactly how large to make a balloon and how high we can expect that balloon to go in high altitude balloons such as the Red Bull Stratogel. They were able to actually predict the maximum elevation of that jump based on these equations. And that's exactly where the balloon ended up. So thank you very much for stopping by. This is Bob the Science Guy signing out from Northern Michigan. We'll see you on the next episode.